All right, let's take a look at that. So this is first lap, hot lap. I think that the tires were a little too much for second lap. This lap is kind of wild. But going into the out lap here, just a tiny tap on the brake, or even not even a tap. You can just get out of the throttle for a little bit for one blip and then get back in and just drive along the top. If you stay along the top, the exit is not gonna be as straight. So I like to bring it down the hill about halfway and then straighten out my wheel on exit. But I need to bring it down. Well, so I was messing around with how far I could go down at the start finish line and save time. I think you could probably go a lane lower than I'm going right now, but it makes entering turn one harder. So I elected not to. Uh, so just, just for your guys' information. So going into turn one here, we're gonna do what I call the Darlington line. And that's when you make a diamond from middle to high. So we're gonna be dragging the brake from right as we start turning into the corner, we start dragging the brake, dragging the brake, let the car slide up. So once we hit that kind of lane right there, it's not really a seam, but that kind of mark halfway on the track, then we pick up the gas to 60-ish, 50, 60%. And if we did this timing correctly, we should be able to stay off the wall. With a, You see how my hand isn't moving? If I turn the wheel anymore here, I'm just gonna be locking up tires. So I find that amount of turn that works for me, 50%, and then just bring it all the way up to the wall. Might take some practice, but then once we make it to the wall, it'll start turning off on its own uh, if we timed it correctly. And then we go full throttle make sure we bring it down at least a lane, if not more, because this guy right here is the bane of my existence. This this part of the safer barrier that sticks out is so annoying. Like, I can't tell you how many times I hit the wall there. It just sticks out. So you can't run the very top or else you're just gonna hit that every time. So you have to come back at least like a lane and then straighten out and finish like the diamond. Okay. Turn three and four, kind of the same. We're gonna be doing the same aim for the middle, left side is a little bit higher than the middle. Drag the brake very minutely all the way to. Pick up the throttle. Three and four, you can pick up the throttle to full instead of half as we come up the track, just because of the shape of the corner. It's different angles. So you see we don't even come up to the wall here. I don't mind not coming up to the wall here because I'm trying to bring the car all the way back down so that I can get like a free half a tenth by finishing all the way down here. Something about how that is but it's pretty, it's a lot simpler than one and two in my opinion, because you don't really have to go as close to the wall as you did in one and two. But yeah, so the smoothly pick it up to a hundred. It should be easily stay off the wall if you do that. And then turning back down about a lane. Don't exit quite by the wall because then we're gonna come back down the track onto the apron. All right, this is a weird one, but now let's take a look at long run. All right, let's talk about long run. So I have a confession to make, and that is I suck at rocking it. So what I have found a lot of times is that top line that we used in qualifying actually does become the race line, at least later in the round. I mean, staying off that wall is a pain. And then that exit is really dumb because of the wall sticking out there. I don't know. I like, I personally like the bottom a lot. but you do really go through a lot of bumps and stuff that could really screw up your tires. So if we get down to the bottom early, just use a lot of brake. Ooh, man, this track is the death of me, I swear. But we use, if you use as much brake as possible to rotate the car throughout the entire corner, then you don't really get as much of that cheese grater effect across your tires by having to turn the wheel a ton. This is gonna be a mega right front burner. Rocking him always is. Even if the car snaps loose, don't get it twisted. This is a right front burner. Yeah, honestly, the top might be where this goes. Especially with dynamic track. If the bottom slicks off and you really aren't able to get down there very easily, you're gonna be wearing a lot of tire just getting there. But this is the bottom line I like. It feels like it's really good on tires until right there. Jeez, pizza. The, the exit, the, when you drive just pure bottom, the exit of turn two just doesn't work. Like, you have to turn the wheel extra just to not hit the wall. So my, intu my current intuition 
is that you drive this top line and one and two. You can tell I'm not going to cut here. You drive the top line in one and two. And then you can ride the bottom three. And you see that we have a lot more room off of the exit here to save our tires with. That's what I think the line is going to be. So middle to top, same line as call for one and two. There we go. Because that really feels like it uses less tire than having to crank the car off the corner. Well, we can run top three and four too. I just don't think it's nearly as good as uh, running the bottom in terms of saving tires. And it's all because of that exit. So one and two, we're able to set up outside and then turn the car back down the hill. Yeah, that feels really good. So that you don't hit the wall there. And then three and four, you can just do the bottom to save tire. You can really even get back in the crawl pretty early and just drive it kind of straight off the corner. Yeah, okay, I'm convinced that's what the line is going to be. Uh, dynamic track might switch one in, or three and four, up top two. But I really don't like the bottom of one and two. Just because of that right there. That part of the wall, I don't know if you can manage that in one and two while still being good on your tires, while still maintaining good pace. Maybe some people will, but this is feeling, this is feeling the most natural right now in terms of the car is not fighting me very much. I don't think that there's much going on in terms of tire wear. This right here, like staying off the wall, that part might have some tire wear on it, but I think that it's mitigated by having an easier exit. Because we'll try the bottom one more time in turn one and two, and I'm gonna really try my best to not like even come close to the wall, but try to maintain some speed. So let's see. This is for all the marbles, for my recommendation. Going to the bottom. Feels good down here so far. And then I'm gonna try to come off the corner. Uh, I like, okay, I don't know. Is it bottom, bottom? Bottom, bottom, but the top could also work. Okay, we're gonna try again. So I delayed my throttle point on one and two. Delaying the throttle point. I'm trying to do a slightly late apex. Yeah, okay, that's my new records. <laughs> Sorry guys. Sorry for the confusion, but the top will probably be good late run. That's usually where they go to in other cars. But in one and two, I think the bottom is good until stuff starts slipping. Late apexing one and two slightly. A little diamond, honestly. And then if you miss it, it's really close to the wall. So yeah. Sorry, I'm not the greatest Rockingham guy. Hopefully you got some stuff out of the lines I was taking. Um, 96, 95, that's really good. That means that I was doing something right between those two lines if the right rear is wearing more than the front because this is usually a right front destroyer. So just be mindful of that. Uh, definitely go for the same kind of goals that I was doing in three and four, straightening out the exits, trying not to dive it in too deep into the corners. But other than that, thank you all for watching. Hope you have a wonderful day. I hope to see you all on the track.